Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, for the second time in less than two months, with another shutdown looming, we are wasting our time on a meaningless immigration resolution full of empty rhetoric whose sole purpose seems to be to justify Republicans' lack of desire to address solutions for our broken immigration system. How did we get here, Mr. Speaker? Earlier this Congress, House Republicans passed their cruel, inhumane, and unworkable border bill, H.R. 2. Now, Republicans continue to say that H.R. 2 is the only way to secure the border, and they continue to say that Democrats have refused to bring H.R. 2 up in the Senate, but in fact, that bill has since failed twice to pass the United States Senate, receiving just 32 votes a few weeks ago. That means there's a lot of Republicans over there in the Senate who didn't vote for H.R. 2. And then, after insisting that the only way to address the border was through harsh border security legislation and holding Ukraine aid hostage, Republicans even managed to get some Democrats to agree to a border bill in the Senate that was written largely by the Senate's second most conservative Republican senator, a bill that Minority Leader Mitch McConnell called the toughest border bill in 30 years. But what happened to that bill? Donald Trump said he didn't want to do anything to help the border in an election year because he wants immigration to be out there as a campaign issue. Other Republicans said it out loud as well, saying they didn't want to do, quote, too damn much to help a Democrat, end quote. Folding to the cult of Donald Trump and just hours after the 370-page text of the bill was re released, Speaker Johnson declared the bill, quote, dead on arrival in the House. The rank and file fell in line, and the Senate bill died before the metaphorical ink was even dry. Republicans have showed clearly what we Democrats have been saying over and over again, that they don't want to do anything that would help address the issues that we face of a broken immigration system. Instead of solving the problem, my colleagues on the other side want to continue to weaponize the border as a political issue for this election year. The truth, Mr. Chairman, is that the situation at the border is directly linked to the fact that our legal immigration system has been left in chaos because it has not been modernized in 30 years to meet the needs of our country, our economy, and our families. When the legal process is so backed up that it takes decades for legal residents to get their children into the country, or when employers simply can't get people they need to hire approved because there's a backlog of two million people that haven't been processed, or when we have so few immigration judges that asylum seekers wait over eight years to get their cases heard, well then people give in to unscrupulous actors, including the cartels, who promise them that if they pay them a boatload of money, they can get them in by going to the border. Until you fix the legal immigration system so that it works, and you update the caps and the quotas, you will continue to see large numbers of migrants at the border. You cannot fix the border without fixing the underlying system. And you certainly cannot fix it with only harsh immigration policy. Speaker Johnson and others have been caught in their own trap. They refuse to give President Biden the resources that we need to process people more quickly. They voted against more money to secure the border with more technology and equipment that Border Patrol agents have told us that they need. They even voted against more money for more agents at the border. And to hide their hypocrisy, they're now claiming that the president can just, quote, secure the border through harsh executive actions alone, no action by Congress necessary. Today's resolution is just another ham-fisted attempt to weaponize the issue of the border, and it's filled with misinformation. The resolution alleges that the Biden administration is not removing people fast enough. Yet in the eight months since ending Title 42, this administration has removed or returned, despite some of our due process concerns, this administration has removed or returned over half a million people, roughly equivalent to the number of people removed and returned by the Trump administration in all of fiscal year 2019. The resolution states that the administration, quote, could comply with the mandatory detention statutes of the Immigration and Nationality Act, which no administration, including the Trump administration, has ever complied with because no Congress has ever appropriated the extraordinary levels of funding that such compliance would require. 
The resolution complains that the president isn't using the suspension of entry authority in section 212F of the INA. But Republicans want to forget that President Trump tried to do exactly that in November of 2018, and he was stopped by the courts. Even the Supreme Court refused to intervene and lift the lower court injunction. Enforcement-only policies do not stop people from crossing the border. In fact, when former President Trump implemented the Remain in Mexico policy early in 2019, that summer, we saw some of the highest levels of immigration, migration of the entire Trump administration. And when President Trump used Title 42 to turn back all border crossers, encounters between the ports of entry actually shot up, not down. Cartels made money hand over fist by providing people with multiple entry attempt packages. One individual was apprehended over 40 times alone, just one individual. In fact, from February 1st of 2017 to December 31st of 2020, the duration of Donald Trump's presidency, illegal border crossings went up by over 300%. People do not make the arduous, dangerous journey here on a whim. They do it because they're often fleeing for their lives or they're desperate to escape an unlivable situation in their home country. And because of that, they will continue to come no matter how many draconian policies they may have to face once they arrive. But the way we can deal with that is to have a system that actually works inside the United States, legal pathways for people to come to this country. The way to fix the border is to modernize our current immigration system so that it works to provide people with different opportunities and abilities to apply to be with their families or to come here and work or to flee war or torture and have their applications and claims processed in a timely way. We have already seen that when we provide workable ways for people to seek entry and refuge, they will use them and encounters between ports of entry fall dramatically. This resolution shows once again that Republicans don't want to do anything to fix the border. This is a resolution that literally does absolutely nothing, changes not one single policy that is on the books. I urge all my colleagues to oppose this resolution and I reserve the balance of my time.